There are a lot of things that you can buy in Rise of Kingdoms, whether you're looking at the Supply Depot, the Daily Special Offer, the Super Value Bundle, the Resource Bundle, the Gem Store, the Pop-Ups, and the Event Bundles, and just so much more. So in this video, I'm going to break it down. What should your strategy for spending potentially be based on the budget that you have? And where should you then deploy that money to get the absolute most value possible? Stick around in this video for the things you need to know. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and today's video is in fact sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And I have spent a shocking amount of money in this game. For those of you that are new to my channel, I've spent over $125,000 in Rise of Kingdoms over the last five plus years that I've been playing. And by the end of this year, I'll probably have spent over 150K total in my journey in Rise of Kingdoms. This very much qualifies me to talk about what is worth spending on because I've actually spent the money. I actually know what you get. And I can tell you, was it worth it or not? And like in some cases, yes. And in other cases, I would say, Maybe I would shift that spending somewhere else or not spend on that now that I've purchased those bundles. So you can use the timestamps in the description to jump to whichever part of this video you are most interested in. And I would encourage you to do that. At the start of the video, we're going to talk about spending strategy. And from there, we'll talk about some of the best bundles based on your strategy. And there are several key strategies for spending in this game. But before I talk about that, I do want to mention that it's very easy to spend way more than you had expected in this game. Trust me, I've actually done that where I budget for the year. I'm like, here's my budget. And then I blow past it. So it is very, very worth considering your life priorities before you spend in a mobile game, whether it is saving for retirement. And by the way, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, but there are many things that will give you potentially great joy and satisfaction over your life. Saving for retirement, having an emergency fund, prioritizing your family. These are just a few examples of things that are almost certainly going to end up being more important than spending in a mobile game. So make your choices and choose wisely. But you're, you're an adult, presumably, as a viewer of this video, so make your choices. But let's talk about now what the spending strategies are if you are spending in Rise of Kingdom. And what you may not know if you're a new player to the game is that in the end game, you may think, aha, I've done it. I've maxed out my account. I've, you know, done my research for my tier five troops and I have maxed literally every piece of research in here. I, I'm in the end game, baby. But then, but then you'll get into something called KVK. Now we're about to enter KVK on my main account. But once you do in the end game, you are going to have something to spend on called Crystal Technology. Now, I can show you this on one of my alternate accounts here. And Crystal Technology is essentially having to spend all over again for stats and tech to, in order to be relevant in the end game. And you either spend on Crystal Technology or you are basically not irrelevant in the end game, but like you will hit different and not in a good way. <laughs> So here are the crystal research buildings. There's the mine and the research center. And as you can see, there's tons of research in here that is going to give you stats, army capacity, rally capacity, troop capacity, march speed. And you have to spend on this every time you're in KVK. And if you want to rush your crystal technology, you spend over $1,200. Uh, so it's a season pass, essentially, for over $1,200. If you want to approach it in a value-oriented way, and you will not be at the bleeding edge of crystal technology, but you'll still be a good field fighter, you can spend somewhere between 120 to, we'll call it 400 bucks on your crystal technology. That's, again, every three months when you're in KVK, approximately. Um, or you can be super value-oriented and spend on the most basic things. And we'll cover that in, in a little bit. We don't need to cover it now. But I'm mentioning this because you got to understand that because of the presence of crystal technology, there are effectively a, a limited number of strategies for how to spend in this game. And let me explain. Strategy number one, or situation number one is, hey, you know what, Chisco? I don't have my T5s unlocked yet. I don't have max technology. I need to get to that. I don't have it. So strategy number one is, what do you spend on to get to the end game, all right? 
Strategy number two is related to when you are in the end game, you are a fielder, not a rally lead, not a garrison. You open field, maybe you swarm stuff every now and then. All right, what do I need to spend on? And, and spending at this tier is going to be a multiplier on your speed ups, your resources, and ultimately your troops if you're swarming garrisons. And I mention this because, hey, look, it's a multiplier for your trade quality to have better equipment, better commanders, etc. But at the end of the day, I think you're just talking about your trade quality. Kingdoms are going to win and lose for the most part based on whether or not one kingdom or another gets drained. I don't think it's necessarily based on per se, you know, whether or not your account hits harder in the open field. We'll talk about who really influences the multipliers for the kingdom in just a second here, okay? The third strategy for spending is to say, hey, you know what? Although I'm interested in hitting hard in the field, I just need more troops. And the things that you spend on are different when you're going for troop quantity rather than trade quality, okay? And I think of trade quality as a multiplier for everything you do on your account. And I'll jump back to my main account to show you what trade quality looks like, all right? And the final strategy, which is also my main account strategy, is to say, hey, I'm a rallying garrison lead. I am a meaningful multiplier for the success or failure of the kingdom. I am a very meaningful multiplier on the speed ups and resources for literally the entire kingdom in the form of troop loss. And that is a very powerful role. And what you spend on for that role is potentially different than just going for the maximum number of troops possible. And just to sort of give an example here, right? I've got iconic tiered crit equipment and it's taking a second to load for whatever reason. But once it does, you'll see like, oh, hey, yeah, like that, that gear is really expensive. I've probably spent like over $10,000 on this equipment plus these armaments, which are really, really powerful. And you may be like, well, bro, I don't even have armaments yet. <laughs> I don't even have any of this stuff you're showing me yet. Like, let's start at the beginning. And okay, let's start at the beginning. Now, there are several strategies for when and how you spend in this game. And I want to cover this as well. So in addition to having these different goals, they're also, and I know you're like, bro, just talk about the bundles. We'll get there. But, but it's important to understand what tier you're going to spend at. And there are several tiers. And we'll go over the bundles in terms of the different tiers. There are just like super, super value-oriented spenders. They spend almost nothing, but when the value is insane, they'll do it. For example, Lucerne Scrolls. When the value is insane, they'll spend on it. We'll talk about the things you buy at this tier. We're going to talk about the recharge event spender tier, all right? The recharge event spender tier is the people who spend when there's a special event that shows up, and during that special event, spending money gets you even more things for having spent money. And that is a super reasonable tier to spend at because it effectively like doubles the value of the bundles because you get just a ton of stuff on top. And we'll give a look at what, what some of those recharge rewards are, all right? Then there are crystal technology spenders. And this is what I was showing you a bit earlier. I wanted you to see the, the volume of crystal technology because a lot of people will just not spend money outside of crystal technology because they've realized that there's two things they need to do. They need to have the highest impact possible in KVKs and the rest of the time, like, look, like, yeah, they want to improve their account, but they realized that you get better trade quality working on your crystal technology than you do working on your account, generally speaking. So working on that crystal tech ends up being more important than spending all the time on other things. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, then from here, we get into the really big spending tiers. The really big spending tiers are the people who always play all the events. And like, yeah, nope, you got to buy more than just uh, some of the basic bundles to have the gems to do that. Then there are people who are really pushing it, and they're going to max holiday events and holiday, you know, super value bundles, all the bundles on top of that. And then if you can believe it, there's the final tier of insanity, and that's people buying straight gems. Recently, someone spent over $500,000 on the wagon of gems. No, I'm not kidding you. I have this video, I'll have a card up top. I streamed it, where they spent over $500,000, and then they gemmed. It was 155 million gems worth of troops which is insane. 
This is this is the final form of insanity. Is just you get the wagon of gems and you just buy it over and over until you have the amount of gems you want, and then you just start gemming troops. It is nuts. So <laughs> let's come back to reality, shall we? And let's start with the super value spender. If you are a super value spender, there's a couple things you're going to go for that is just so off the charts that for a tiny amount of money, yep, you're going to do it. And the first thing is you're going to go into your trading post and you're going to buy Lucerne Scrolls. This is basically a battle pass and you're going to do the activities that come with the Lucerne Scrolls and for $5, you complete all the challenges and you are going to get absolutely massive value, some of the highest you can get in the game. The Lucerne Scrolls ends up being the best place to go and spend money at the like insane value tier. There are a couple other places that you can go and spend money at the insane value tier. And if we go to the store, if you're a newer player to the game, you're going to have the option to buy something. I believe it's called the Growth Fund. And for every City Hall level you advance to, or every couple City Hall levels you advance to, you're going to get a bunch of gems. And the gem amount goes up based on your City Hall level. Now, you don't have to buy this right away. You can wait until you are City Hall 25, which at the time of this recording is the max City Hall level in the game. And if you go and do that, you get just a shocking amount of gems for like 15 bucks, which, again, at the insane value hunter tier of spender level, the lowest tier of like, yeah, I want to spend, but not much, the value is really nuts there, and, and you want to go for that, okay? The other thing that people typically spend on at that tier of like the, the just like super value spender is they go to the supply depot, and although they don't buy all these supplies, which... For higher spend tiers, I would definitely recommend. We'll get to that. They buy the 30-day gem supply, all right? And they just keep that sucker running. And they'll refresh the 30-day gem supply during a recharge event. That way, they get a little bit extra for having spent money. And boom, that's it. Just a couple things, max value possible. And you can play this game in a smaller kingdom, a less powerful kingdom, and you can really enjoy it. You can enjoy the open field. Yeah, you'll get beat up by higher spenders. It is what it is. You just play for value over time, and it is a fine way to enjoy the game. All right? Now, as I mentioned, recharge events are super valuable. And I'll take maybe a couple screenshots and put some of those on. Although, if you want to see what recharge events look like, I've covered them in depth in dedicated videos. I'll have a card up in the top or maybe in the end screen. Um, the little info button will have it where you can see how these recharge events sort of work but the big picture is over the course of some number of days you top up some amount of gems it's raw gems not pop-up uh, bundles but raw gems and having gone in and purchased your raw gems um, is going to give you extra goodies for having done so okay this is sort of the second tier of spender in the game is you say hey i'm gonna do these recharge events and i don't normally spend but I'm going to do recharge events because it basically doubles the value of, and I'm, I'm shooting from the hip on the exact amount, but it, it effectively, dramatically increases the value of the bundles you're buying. And in that situation, my strong recommendation to you, when you go and do these events, which typically show up like once a month, there'll be a recharge event. My recommendation is that's a great time to top up your supplies. And the supplies generally tend to be really high value. In this game, you can either get things fast and pay a lot for it, or you can get them at value over time. And the supply depot is exactly that spot. So during a recharge event, I'll go in and I'll get the 30-day gem supply, make sure that's cooking for you know 30 days. I'll get the speed up supply, I'll get the material supply, I'll get the armament supply. And if, it, if I was in the early game, I would definitely get the research speed up supply hunting for value, okay? The other thing that is really great value that you will potentially spend on during a recharge event is the daily special offer. The daily special offer, uh, depending on how old your kingdom is, can bring a variety of legendary commanders. And this bundle is actually insane in terms of how much value you get for a relatively small amount of money. And the way to go and do this is to buy effectively all three of the bundles. There's three of them in the, the daily special offer. 
the one, two, and three dollar tier. You just you buy all that for five bucks. And I did the math on this in a prior video. I'll have a card up in the top, but it is better than any super value bundle. It is better than the equivalent amount of spend, uh, spending in holiday bundles. It's probably better than a lot of pop up bundles. It's really nuts how much value you can get in this daily special offer. Uh, now, there are pop up bundles that can potentially be better, but remember, those will not count toward recharge events, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, on the topic, however, of being at this like recharge spender and value oriented spender tier, we do need to talk about the pop up bundles because the value is really good. And there are several pop up bundles that you need to be on the lookout for. Okay. If you're a new player to the game, you're going to get a bunch of pop up bundles that show up as you're building up your city, when you unlock tier fives. For the most part, those kind of pop up bundles are better than the super value bundles in the shop, but not as good as just waiting for a recharge event or spending it some other opportunistic time. So although you might feel like, oh man, it's like a limited time city hall related pop-up, those bundles are typically better than what you can get here in the super value bundles. But I don't think they're better than just waiting for a recharge event. So if you're a very low spender, like I would not feel pressured to get those bundles. If you're a bigger spender, you're rushing to T5, then they're very valuable because otherwise you're just buying super value bundles. Now with that said, the most valuable pop-ups come from things like summoning a legendary for the first time, uh, fully crafting or, or at least assembling the pattern for legendary equipment. It's called a Vanquisher bundle. And I believe that once you get to the end game, pretty much every time you get an inscription for a new formation spot, you'll get a pop-up bundle for uh, armaments that's really, really valuable. There are also a couple really valuable pop-ups related to equipment as you are unlocking your blacksmith and going in and working on where's my blacksmith over here um working on your your equipment so there are a couple pop-ups there that are super valuable but the one you're going to see most commonly is going to be this one right here when you summon a new legendary it's the writer of history boom now writer of history is extremely high value even compared to the daily special offer and for this you're spending five bucks you're getting 10 legendary commander sculptures guaranteed, and these can be applied to any legendary commander, which like, yeah, for obvious reasons, that's going to be better than the daily special offer. So the only issue here is that this contains gem tokens, not raw gems. So this is not going to count towards recharge events, which is definitely a bummer. But this bundle is so high value that like, I will definitely buy this on my restart account. I know I have a 117 million power restart account, whatever. I'm going to go and buy this. And we will talk a little bit later about flux scripts, another way to get a deal, and also flux, co flux coins. So I'm just going to buy this. And let's get back to the topic of where to spend next. So we've covered the super value spender and what they're getting. We've covered the recharge event spender and what they're getting. And now we need to talk about that next tier of spender, okay? And that is the crystal tech spender. Now, the crystal tech spender realizes something very smart, which is that, again, you want to help your kingdom be successful, and the best way to do that is to improve your multiplier on what your speedups and what your resources get done. And although you could do things other than crystal technology, which might seem like a great idea for improving your equipment or improving your armaments, the better thing is to work on your crystal technology. And I'll explain why in a second. Because the stats you gain here are insane. So if you want to be a relevant open fielder in the end game, you're going to spend some amount of money on this crystal technology. It is a thing you will do. There is no free-to-play way to match what a spender can do. It does not exist. It is not possible. And it resets every... and kvk in the end game so you got to start all over okay so when you do that the highest value things you can go and buy include 15 bucks on the crystal quest 
This is your battle pass. It's the equivalent of the Looser and Scrolls. It's the most value-oriented way, for sure, to be getting crystals, in addition to the crystal supply. The crystal supply can be viewed uh, from your crystal mine. It'll take you to the shop. It's five bucks, and it improves your crystal mine work speed. This is how you're going to be getting crystals every single day. So for five bucks, you buy this. You also get 60,000 crystals a day. So for 20 bucks total, you can go in and get the bare minimum crystals to be more relevant in your KVK. If you want to spend more, as you level up your crystal mine and your crystal research center, and as you do some key research, you're going to get pop-up bundles. Those pop-up bundles are generally pretty good value. And I really like rushing your crystal technology at the start of the KVK because every single day that you have better crystal technology, you can get better economy. So there, there's crystal technology, for example, that will reduce your research costs. So being able to rush that is really valuable. And there's things that will increase your free-to-play ways of gaining crystals from doing quests. They're called bastion quests. So all that to say, rushing your tech on day one holds value beyond just the initial rush of crystals. You, you can research things that give you more economy. So for that reason, it, you want to probably plan to spend about 100 bucks, maybe it's around 120, for going in and getting all those pop-ups. All right, so somewhere between 120, 140 bucks gets the crystal quest, gets the crystal supply, uh, and gets all the pop-ups that you can get from rushing your crystal mine and your crystal research center, which by the way, simply leveling up your crystal research center is gonna give you a crystal cost reduction of 5% total. And like these things definitely all add up over time. This is a very important spending tier because again, I just want to emphasize how important it is to rush and, and push your crystal technology for your team if you are in the end game for your KVKs, all right? This is KVK season four and beyond. KVK season one, two, and three do not have crystal technology. Now, from here, if you want to spend more on crystal technology, there is a way to go and do that. Every time there is a major pass opening, and by the way, if I go into the KVK screen, you can go into the Chronicles. I can scroll through this, and when there is a major pass opening, you can see there'll be a little present icon. There'll be a bundle called the Mountain Warfare Bundle, and it's like 185 bucks for like 9.8 million crystals. That ends up being the next best way to buy crystals, and the least effective way to buy crystals that many people will go and do if they're big spenders and they'll do this on a daily basis is they'll go in and they will buy the super value bundle called conqueror as well that's 35 bucks a day i want to say it's like more around a million crystals i don't remember the exact amount but it is the least effective way to buy crystals but at the end of the day a big part of what's happening with crystal technology is just having more crystal tech relative to your opponents. So if you don't want, you particularly like the sort of crystal technology system, going to a less powerful kingdom will generally be less competitive for the amount you would need to spend in order to uh, be relatively strong compared to your opponents, right? Now, the upside of spending on crystal technology is that as you go in and research stuff, you're going to get season coins. And your season coins can be used in the combat shop over here for other things. So this is why I was saying that the smartest uh, low spenders will maybe do recharge events, maybe, but they'll definitely shift all of their spending toward crystal technology because you also end up getting other things as well from doing that. Plus, at the start of the KVK, there is also a recharge event. And that recharge event will give you some crystals and gold heads and legendary materials. So that if you're only going to do, you know, one thing, if you spend in the end game, you know, yeah, I mean, the gem supply is insane. Yeah, I mean, going and get Lucerne Scrolls is insane. But then every other dollar you prioritize toward your crystal tech, right? Now, if you are going beyond the crystal technology and you're going to go and you're going to buy the things that 
let you have the gems to do spender events in the game. What then do you spend on? And here is where things get kind of interesting, depending on what your goals are. If you want troops, then I will say very obviously, you're going to be spending on the bundles that are going to be giving you a bunch of speed ups. This typically means holiday bundles. Holiday bundles tend to have a lot of speed ups per dollar. But I will argue that I, and I've, I've stopped spending on speed ups. I will argue that the better place to spend is on your field quality. And if you're going to do that, you really want to improve your armaments. You really want to improve uh, your equipment. So how do you go and do that? Well, I actually think that spending on equipment is generally not the best way to improve your equipment. Spending gems on equipment events, now that is big poggers. That works really well. So what I try to do is put all of my dollar spending into armaments and all of my gem spending into equipment. And there's a couple of ways to go and do that, including the events that show up, the VIP shop. But as an example, if I were looking at this monthly special offer, I buy this and I'll go in and it's like, hey, legendary formation choice chests. I will buy that. I'll go in and I'll get maybe some healing speeds over here. It doesn't really matter what speed up type you get there. Uh, and then I'll probably get crystal keys at this $50 tier. But I will prioritize this bundle over other bundles because I really, as a bigger spender, want to be improving my armament quality. I'll go in over here and I'll put the formation choice chest. Instead of the crystal keys here, I'm going to do the speed ups because you can see between the $50 tier and the $100 tier, all I got was three more keys. But over here, look at this. I doubled the number of speed ups. What is this? 30 hours of speed ups. And then at the $100 tier, 60 hours of speed ups. Yeah, no. Instead of three more keys, I'll take the extra speeds. Thank you very much. Uh, and then, boom, I'll take speeds over here like this, right? And in terms of super value bundles, I will always buy the Imperial Armaments. And that is how I prioritize my spending. And I have plenty of gems to go do all the spending events. So every two weeks, I buy Imperial Armaments and I'm pretty much good to go on top of all the other spending I do in the game. And that's it. I open armament crates, I hope for the best, and I get what I get, and it has generally improved my trade quality in the field, and is also on the path to rally and garrison excellence, okay? Now, if you want to go to the next tier of spending, then what you do is you start buying the super value bundles, and it all depends on your spend level, again, there are several escalations. One escalation would be, hey, I'm going to buy holiday bundles. The next ex escalation would be, I'm going to buy royal armaments every day. You really want to spend on those armaments? Look, if you spend car money on armaments, you're going to have a rally or garrison that actually is so insane that even the strongest kingdoms in the game, literally, my, someone I play with, his name is War Daddy Chad, his armaments are so good that like the best rally leads from 1960 were like, your armaments are broken. It is disgusting. Okay, they literally were telling him that is broken. So you can do that. You can get to that point. And like, royal armaments every day is how you do that. <laughs> it, and it, we're talking about car money. Like, big car money. Like, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 plus between imperial armaments, royal armaments, and you just keep hammering that. Like, yeah, that's how you do it. All right? In addition... There are these speed up bundles over here. And it's like, wow, Chiskul has not talked about all these super value bundles yet. Bro, WTF? So there's a couple super value bundles that are very important. The most important one is the bundle with passports, New World. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the extreme details of what's in these bundles, okay? But what I'll simply say is the New World bundle mat matters, mat really matters a lot because you get passports. Passports are what you need to migrate to a new kingdom. If you were in the end game, you could need as many as 75 passports if you're at 100 million power or higher. And I think it is very, very important to be able to enjoy the game with who you want to enjoy the game with. So in that regard, spending on this bundle is valuable. However, this bundle escalates the number of passports in a way that it's not so great for you. So $5 tier gets you one passport. So $5 for a passport. 
The $10 tier is going to get you two passports. Okay, still $5 for a passport. The $20 tier is going to get you three passports. Well, now the value is going down, but still not bad, okay? But the $50 tier is only going to give you four passports, and the $100 tier is only going to give you five passports. So what you very quickly learn here is that you could take, and this bundle resets only once a month. So it could take you three months to migrate out of your kingdom if you have to buy passports from here and if there's no alliances that want to put them in the shop for you. So in my opinion, every single month it is worth buying the 5 and $10 tier of this bundle because it's so cheap to get those passports, 15 bucks for three passports. And that way over time, you are building a safety net. And then once you have 75 passports or 100 passports, you can just chill on buying this bundle if you wanted because you've gone in sort of a value-oriented way and like built yourself that safety net of, I can leave this kingdom if I need to. And you may think, oh, well, my kingdom's fine. I'll never need to do that. You just, how naive. I, that is so cute. There, there have been only like one or two kingdoms in the game where you could have stayed the entire time and been like, yeah, no, at no moment in time have I felt like there was a problem here. Trust me, you want to have passports, all right? That is very important. But from here, what are you getting, all right? Each of these bundles does different things, and oof, so much to talk about. Um, let's start with the Echoes of History. The Echoes of History is a bundle that is going to give you relic and exhibit coins. It's relevant only when you unlock the museum, and only if you have early game commanders that you want to make relevant in the end game. Once you get to this point, you'll know whether or not you need more of this currency, and if you do, you'll consider spending on this to go and get it in the short term. In the long term, you'll get a fair amount of this currency free to play. It just takes a while. The Legendary Warriors bundle is going to give you a bunch of sovereign keys. You'll never really need the, in my opinion, the, the experience tomes. May, like Maybe you need the stars. But the, the main value of this bundle is if you really want sovereign keys, which is a way to get um, legendary commanders that are from the end game, but not even necessarily the meta, quite frankly. So that's a way to do Legendary Warriors. It's an end game version of Living Legend. Living Legend is an early game way to rush Legendary Commander Sculptures. It is a small amount of Legendary Commander Sculptures for a high amount of dollars. This is a very big spender play. The more likely thing to spend on, it's actually Geared Up. These days, Geared Up looks pretty good, but I still think it's better to spend on armaments and then gem for equipment events. So, But if you wanted to work on equipment more, you work on geared up. Small amount of materials, small amount of keys, small amount of speed ups for the money you spend, but it is progress, and this is a way to get incremental progress. The City of Hope, War Machine, and Fountain of Wisdom are all speed up related bundles. If I remember correctly, you get a grand total of about 36 days worth of speed ups total from max purchasing the bundle. That's 385 bucks. Compared to a holiday event bundle, you're getting less speed ups. Holiday event bundles tend to be between 50 and 60 days worth of speed ups when you max purchase the bundle. So uh, more value to be had in the holiday events, but those are only available like once a month. So these bundles reset every single day and you can go in and get with the City of Hope a blend of universal and building speeds. War Machine is universal and training speeds and Fountain of Wisdom is universal and research speeds. All right. Then there is Bumper Harvest. This is a resource-based bundle. And I've covered resource-based bundles extensively in the past and compared the Supply Depot as well. So I'll have a card up uh, in the top comparing the Supply Depot, their special resource bundle, and also these super value bundles. But these special resource bundles, bro, hey, look, do you notice what's missing here? I'll, I'll spoil it for you. There's no gems that comes with the special resource bundle. You spend $100 and like, yeah, you can get a bunch of gold. But like, bro, you didn't get any gems. That's expensive. That's real expensive. <laughs> okay, so like in a crisis, okay, I guess. I, I guess, right? But I generally would rather buy any bundle that has gems than go with that, all right? Now, there is one other super value bundle that we need to talk about um, that shows up every other week. So I personally told you I think the best priority is Imperial Armaments, okay? And just work on your trade quality. But the other way you could go in order to get the best speed ups and reserves and army expansions every other week is that when Ark of Osiris will show up, 
there will be a Call of the Ancients bundle. So instead of Imperial Armaments that week, it'll be Call of the Ancients. The Call of the Ancients bundle is super high value compared to all the other super value bundles. Holy smokes. Now, at this point, I think we've covered the overwhelming majority of bundles you will be approached with. The other thing I will point out that is actually really high value is that the first time you buy gems, you get double gems. Now, if you're spending those gems in events that are then going to give you a really good trade for your gems for stuff like the Wheel of Fortune, it's actually a lot of value to go in and purchase double gems over here. After you buy double gems the first time, it will no longer be double gems. So this $100 wagon of gems will be like just a 5,000 gem bonus. And, and after that point, no, you'd rather have all the other bundles than get the wagon of gems. Oh, man. All right. So going in and buying gems actually is not terrible, even though, uh, yeah, it's more of like a crazy, crazy spender thing to go in and just hammer on the wagon of gems. That is really unusual. Like you'd, in, in, in all circumstances, rather just be max purchasing the shop. And people have joked, I wish I had a single button to buy all the bundles. Well, the makers of Rise of Kingdoms did kind of do that. So we need to talk about the final way to get value as you spend in Rise of Kingdoms. And this is with something called the Pluto Mall. Now, I recognize this is already a longer video, but there's so damn much to talk about. The Pluto Mall is a place you can go. It's, it's made by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms and their family of, of games. So whether you play Rise of Kingdoms, Call of Dragons, uh, AFK Journey, AFK Arena, the overwhelming majority of these games, I don't know if AFK Journey is in there, but the overwhelming majority of these games are in the Pluto Mall. And in the Pluto Mall, I'll put a link in the description, okay? You can go and you can buy for Rise of Kingdoms something called Flux Scripts. Now, these Flux Scripts have an equivalent amount of value in bundle. So like you spend $100 and you get a $100 Flux Script. But at the time of this recording, in addition to getting the $100 Flux script, you also get some Flux coins. And Flux coins can be used to make purchases as well. These systems are understandably confusing. And I don't know if that's by design, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that going into the Pluto Mall gets you extra value beyond just buying from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And the reason is that you get about somewhere between eight to, we'll call it eight to 10% extra value for having purchased that same thing. So I'm still getting used to these flux coins and their exact value, but it, but it used to be that like you buy a hundred dollar flux script and you also got a $10 flux script for free on top of that when you bought that from the Pluto mall. So when I want to go and make a purchase, like I would buy these scripts in the Pluto Mall. I also get some extra coins on top these days. And then I can go in here and I can make a purchase. So for example, I'll go to the daily special offer. I can go over here for five bucks and I can either spend my $5 flux script or I can click this little button and it'll spend 55 of my flux coins. So uh, let's just use my flux script, buy it, and I got the bundle. So this is the best way, in my opinion, to spend in-game, is literally every time I go to spend, I will go to the Pluto Mall first. Let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, this is the Pluto Mall. Uh, and the website, you can see here, it's HTTPS, PlutoMall.com. Very straightforward, all right? Maybe you need the dub, dub, dub when you type it in, but I would assume not. Anyways, you select the game that you want. So I'm going to for this, pick Rise of Kingdoms. Uh, but oh, it does look like AFK Journey is here. So when you're playing Rise of Kingdoms, you're watching my videos, you're almost certainly on the international servers, all right? And you're gonna have to log in. Um, the way that you log in is pretty straightforward. I've covered this in another video. I'll have a card in the end screen for this if you want the full rundown. My intention here is just to show you this. So you log into your game account. You'll select which account you want to get the scripts. So you need to be very careful to pick the right city that you have to get these. Otherwise, you end up giving it to your farm and there's no way to change that they're on your farm. So be very careful. Select the right city, okay? And you can see here that you get extra stuff for having bought something. So for example, as I was describing, here's the $100 bundle and you get 100 extra flux coins when you buy a $100 bundle. There you go, right? So um, 
that's the way I literally buy everything in game now. Literally everything. I go to the Pluto Mall, I get my scripts, and then I make the purchase in game. All right? That's how you go and do that. There's a bunch of ways you can check out here. You use a credit card, you can use PayPal's, a bunch of approaches. All right? So hopefully this is helpful in getting you sorted out in 2024. And if you're sitting here thinking, whoa, just cool. Like I'm a new player to the game. Okay. And I'm getting all these dang pop-ups. Do I need them or do I not need them? I kind of covered this earlier, but, but I'll just say one, one last time that the holiday events are the best value. But if you're going to be a bigger spender in the game and you want to really rush your city hall, like, yeah, getting the city hall pop-ups are going to be fine. But if you want more information about like every pop-up that you get on every city hall level, I made a spending video in the past that covers that. All of a card in the end screen. I would encourage you to go check that one out. Uh, and in my other spending videos, I mean, over the years, they've added more bundles and more bundles. I've covered some of those. So cards in the end screen for the information you need. Hopefully you enjoyed this vid. If you did, throw a like on here, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. Any other spender questions, drop a comment down below and hopefully I or someone else will go and answer it.